This is Twit. Vulcan rides high, finally. Yeah. Uh, we've, we've had our third launch for United Launch Alliance's Vulcan rocket, the replacement for the Atlas V. This was their most powerful version yet, which, you know, being third out, we'd expect. Had a Centaur upper stage and four solid rocket boosters carrying the first new naval positioning satellite for the U.S. military in 48 years. And also, with a wink and a nudge, it's carrying experimental hardware that's hardened against advanced spoofing and jamming techniques from the bad guys, quote unquote. So basically, they're, they're testing some methods to try and make these things more robust in, in the event of attack, of jamming, or what have you from, from our adversaries. Yeah, that means they're certified now. Fully 100% yeah. for a national reconnaissance mission for military satellite flights. I mean, that's great, especially after they, I mean, they had that, that first uh, test flight. What was that? Was that like last year now, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, and then the second flight that had the big sputtering anomaly from the, the SRBs on the side uh, awesome. and still managed yeah. to right itself and, and get to orbit with its uh, dummy payload uh, at that point in time. I mean, that was like the practice for the Sierra Nevada Dream chaser. Um, uh, the Dream Chaser launch. And so I got a model of it right here, right, right of there. Of course right, you right, do. <laughs> behind behind oh, my of desk. The, of the Vulcan. Yeah. And, and I'll bet uh, that was given to you, right? It was. It was. Because you, you get know, all the cool stuff. And I get you know, ULA nothing. sent it to me before the first launch. And um, I think it might have been during COVID uh, is when they sent it. And, you know, the, uh, the Vulcan, this one that launched, I think, had uh, four boosters yeah. right strap Four on solids. and it, yeah. it can have up to six and um so it can have up to six boosters and right. when i opened the box because it i think they had repackaged it the dhl or whoever delivered it they were all like in pieces they had all broken off the model uh -huh. and and you only offered to to send me like a new one and i'm like that's fine i just got some super glue next and time I glue them say back yes <laughs> send it courtesy of rod pile at 519 south yeah okay so um, so even my version had its hiccups uh going forward but, oh that's the segue you were looking there for. there you okay. go <laughs> so this did uh allow space force i think actually after the second flight they ordered up to 24 new missions for vulcan which is good because it needs to start flying more mm -hmm. often. So this finally gives it its its place as the second U.S. launch provider, which is good because we want dissimilar systems in case one goes down. You've got a backup. SpaceX is the other. Yeah, yeah SpaceX is the other with the Falcon 9. I don't know if Vulcan can ever match that cadence. Can SpaceX, uh, within probably two weeks, will be up to 100 flights just this year. I think they've already passed that. Big, have they? I thought they were yeah. 98. So, I know they were they were at a at a hundred uh, with the Starship launches, but anyway, okay, they're right yeah. in that ballpark, and uh, and ULA is still working on how they're going to recover those those engines um, that will pop out of the bottom of the Vulcan and parachute back to Earth and be grabbed by a helicopter or something. Uh, so they got a lot of work to do, but that will save them about sixty five percent of the cost of a new booster. So that's good. Yeah. If you like what you just saw, be sure to check out This Week in Space. You can catch us on your favorite podcast app or subscribe to our YouTube channel using the links below. Thanks. Thanks.